How did the car wash employee go for a deadly spin? What made the world famous director take her final bow? Why did the honeymooners die in bed? How did these three die by routine maintenance? There are more ways to die than the human mind can imagine. Some are sudden and shocking. Others are slow and methodical. But every death, no matter how strange, can be explained. Even the most curious and unusual. Wyoming, Michigan, August 31st, 2007. This is the easy clean car wash. It's a slow Friday night. So Dave Chapney is shutting down early. He's the only guy left on the job. Just as Dave wraps up a few last minute chores, company arrives. My truck isn't clean. So we're closed. Well, it was here we're like closed. an hour ago and it's not clean. Dave prides himself on keeping every customer happy. Okay, give me, give me a moment. I'm gonna head to the back. I'm gonna start the system again and then we'll, we'll get this fixed, okay? Okay. As Dave powers up the system, his customer takes matters into his own hands. Not a good idea, says car wash owner Scott Murray. A customer getting out and handling equipment like that would just not be allowed. Then they surely wouldn't be grabbing a power hose and doing their own prep. There's safety issues involved. And important protocols for using and returning all car wash equipment. Something Dave's client may not understand. But Dave does. He knows the rules, and he follows them to the letter. Okay, move forward. It's all about the safe loading of the vehicle and the communication to the driver. Now keep it neutral. Once the car wash itself is activated, that is when the driver is basically giving control of his vehicle over to the conveyor. At that point, the machines have taken over. Once the truck is sprayed with chemicals, giant scrubbers take over, and they're powerful. They're usually electric motors that are driving them. They're moving at a speed and, and close enough to the vehicle that they can apply some pressure to be able to remove any kind of dirt. These brushes rotate 100 times per minute. If they were to catch on anything, they would spin it to shreds. After two minutes, Dave's client is almost through. All he has left is a blow dry. As for Dave, he just has a few jobs to take care of before closing time. First up, power wash the floor. This young gentleman had come back and saw the power hose lying where the, the driver of the vehicle left it in a spot where it shouldn't be. As he picked it up, the brushes had to still be activated, obviously. A car wash can take more than 30 seconds to power down. More than enough time for the hose to wrap around the scrubber. And then wrap around Dave. struck several of these metal objects that would be in the proximity of the brush itself. And 
This starts a deadly chain of events, explains trauma specialist Dr. Andrew Baker. When the brain gets injured, it swells up. And what's different about the brain is that it's in a closed box called the skull. When your brain starts to swell up, it has nowhere to go, so the pressure builds up inside the skull. And the pressure gets so high, it can cut off its own blood supply. Dave doesn't stand a chance. The brain is the center of control for keeping you alive. It keeps your breathing going, and it controls your heart and your blood pressure and all that sort of thing. So when your brain gets injured, it can kill you. It's not long before a passing motorist drops by and finds Dave hanging from one of the power scrubbers. Oh, God. Dave Chapney wanted nothing more than to close up shop for the night. But the only thing that wrapped up was his own curious and unusual death. Coming up, how did the world-famous director go from making a splash to taking her final bow? Dallas, Texas, July 24th, 1955. This is Margot Jones. Boys, we're going to have a party. <laughs> a world-renowned theater director. I know what you'd like. She's made a name for herself on Broadway, directing dozens of hit plays. Here you are. Thank you. <laughs> Margot works hard, and she plays hard. That's why she's nicknamed the Texas Tornado. Her biographer, Helen Sheehy, explains. She had enormous energy. With her company, she was very social. She liked having people around her. She did not like being alone. James, what's your poison? Tonight, she's on a tear with two of her friends. <laughs> they had been kicked out of a cast party because they had gotten too drunk and rowdy. So they go back to Margot's to continue the party. <laughs> and Margot's home is a room in the Stonely Hotel, a perfect place to host a wild late night bash. Margot got very drunk. Oh! She strips off all of her clothes and dances. She was swigging vodka out of a bottle. Uh, I can paint, you know. But you can. <laughs> it's not long before Margot decides this party needs more color. And I can paint you. <laughs> Damn it, Margot! <laughs> Egyptian cop! I gotta go. I'll see you tomorrow. <sighs> the next morning, she wakes up, and of course, there's paint everywhere. So she asks her secretary to clean the carpet. I'm not getting paid enough for this. <sighs> but this stain is stubborn. Hi, we're going to need you to come up here right away. So she calls in the professionals. Thank you so much. It's a job that will require a lot of chemicals, explains carpet cleaner Lee Center. If you have paint all over the place and these people have one day to do it, they're sort of rushing through it. It wouldn't be unheard of for a cleaner to start pouring the solvent on. It might take easily 12 to 20 applications of the solvent to be able to adequately remove it. And in the 1950s, the weapon of choice 
is carbon tetrachloride, a colorless cleaning solvent. The funny thing about it is it actually smelled sweet. People didn't mind using it. Later that day, Margot comes home to a sweet-smelling clean carpet and a fresh stack of scripts. She's got to find her next big show. What she likes to do is she likes to sit on the floor and read. So she gathers all her scripts around her and she starts reading. She reads late into the night until she gets so tired she passes out right on top of her spotless carpet. Coming up, how did a good night's sleep draw the final curtain on Margot Jones? World famous theater director Margot Jones has spent a night partying. Thank you. Huh, I can paint, you know. But woke up to some nasty stains. Hi, we're gonna need you to come up here right away. Professional carpet cleaners were called in to tackle the mess. But what no one can see is what they left behind. When the carpet was doused with solvent, the wool fibers absorbed some of the liquid. Wool fiber can hold up to 30% of its weight in moisture and still feel dry to the hand. There's no other fiber like that. This carpet may feel dry, but it's soaking in carbon tetrachloride. In large doses, it can be toxic. It would slowly off-gas. Vapors would continue to be released by that chemical. A dangerous situation explains Dr. Gideon Hirschfield. She's lying on a carpet full of something that's emanating fumes. And just by breathing in those fumes, she's actually ingesting enough carbon tetrachloride to develop toxicity. As Margot heads out the door to work, she's got a splitting headache. By the afternoon, she's perspiring heavily. She has uh, blotches on her arms and on her legs, and she thinks that she has heat stroke. She goes home to rest. But what she thinks is heat stroke is actually kidney failure. Your kidney is very important in excreting chemicals. So if your kidney starts to fail, you start to accumulate lots of chemicals that you should have got rid of, and those chemicals become dangerous to the body. When Margot's assistant comes to check on her, she is barely conscious. She would die in hospital nine days later. When they told the company that Margot had died, they were just devastated because it was almost impossible that she could be dead because she was a force of nature. Calm down. Oh my God, Margot Jones spent her life directing theater, never realizing that the final curtain call would be her own curious and unusual death. die in each other's arms. Rotorua, New Zealand, September 12th, 1987. It's almost sundown at the New Moon Motel. Mark Stevenson and Jenny Crane couldn't be happier. <laughs> They've been married for all of four days, and they've come to Rotorua to celebrate, a town that draws over a million tourists every year. Its claim to fame 
are its steaming mud pools, explains geologist Grant Henderson. Rotorua sits on top of uh, the remnants of a supervolcano, and as a result, there's still a lot of heat underground from uh, magmas. You'll see in the parks, they're often steam venting from uh, holes in the ground or boiling mud pools. All this steam is a perfect backdrop for a honeymoon. The smell is awful. If it weren't for the smell. When you first go to Rotorua, you smell it a long time before you actually see the city. It smells like rotten eggs. It's horrible. It's from hydrogen sulfide. That's a sulfur gas. It's a gas that forms in volcanic magmas deep underground. When it reaches the pools on the surface, it gives off a pungent odor. And in high concentrations, hydrogen sulfide is deadly. This couple has no need to worry. Their room may smell, but it's not enough to kill the mood or them. But a motel maintenance issue is about to change their destiny. The motel's handyman is struggling to fix their hot water system. It's called a heat exchanger, and it's something that everyone in Rotorua must now have. It's required now by law. If you want to heat water in your motel or your house, you have to have a downhole uh, heat exchanger. All of Rotorua's volcanic action produces a lot of heat, and the heat exchanger is the best way to capture it. It works by piping fresh water underground. When it reaches the steamy volcanic waters, it heats up. And then it's returned to the surface nice and hot. But today, there's more than fresh water spilling out. There's also water infused with hydrogen sulfide. Geothermal water was leaking out of the heat exchanger onto the floor of the utility room and down the drain. But the water is not draining underground. It's heading straight for the room where the honeymooners are sleeping. The problem here is the fact that the drain in the utility room was hooked up to the shower drain in the room next door. Gradually, as more and more hydrogen sulfide is built up, it just keeps pushing it up the pipe until it flows out of the pipe in the shower. It's a design flaw that turns this shower into a pipeline for toxic gas. And with the windows closed, their fate is sealed, explains Dr. Brian Goldman. When you're dealing with low levels of exposure, you're gonna smell that a rotten egg smell, but when you get so many molecules of hydrogen sulfide, they stun the nose, you can no longer smell it. And because they can't smell it, it's not waking them up. As you get to higher levels, the hydrogen sulfide binds to hemoglobin, which is the molecule in your body that carries oxygen. Mark and Jenny's bodies are being robbed of oxygen. Poisoning from hydrogen sulfide can be an extremely quick death. The description that's, that's used in the literature is being poleaxed, like literally struck from behind with an ax and you're dead. Mark Stevenson and Jenny Crane promised to stay together until death did them part, neither realizing that their union would be axed by a curious and unusual death.
the world is full of chores. So when a little maintenance is called for, remember that cleaning a car can take you for a ride. And removing paint can dissolve much more than color. And a honeymoon never lasts forever. The car washer, the theater director, and the honeymooners. All of them thought routine maintenance would lead to the fix. But the only thing they nailed was their own curious and unusual death. 